Hi everyone, it's Nikki Gordon Bluefield here from Transport Evolved, and I'm here today to talk to you about battery breakthroughs. What's more, battery breakthroughs that have been discovered by someone who's 94. Just think about that for a second. While most people are in nursing homes at that kind of age, Professor John Goodenough is still working hard to make batteries better for everybody. And what's more, the breakthrough that's just been announced by him and his team of researchers in Texas could change how we think about electric vehicles forever. I say could because we are still talking about laboratory work and there's always a rather large gap between something being proven in a laboratory and then being commercialized. But if true, this is truly awesome news. Now you might have heard of this Professor John Goodenough before. Not only is he still a professor at the Cockrell School of Engineering at the University of Texas in Austin, but he's also the co-inventor of today's modern lithium-ion battery. So I'm not going to go too in-depth to discuss how these batteries work, partly because I don't think it's needed for this video, but secondly because, well, the last time I studied physics was 1998 at high school, and that's 19 years ago, so my physics knowledge is just a little bit rusty. But here's the important thing you need to know. In a modern lithium-ion battery pack, you've got your two electrodes, your cathode and your anode, and then in the middle you've got a liquid electrolyte through which the ions can pass from one side of the battery pack to the other. Now the direction that those ions flow depends on whether you're charging or discharging the battery. Now what makes this new type of battery so special, which good enough developed alongside other members of the Cockrell Engineering faculty, including senior researcher Maria Helena Braga, is that the battery itself is a solid state battery. And that means that instead of using a liquid electrolyte, it uses a solid electrolyte. In addition to being solid state, the use of a glass electrolyte makes it possible for the battery's anode to be made of an alkali metal, such as lithium, potassium, or sodium. And what makes that special is that sodium is far easier to obtain and process and a lot cheaper to do so than either potassium or lithium. And that could lower the cost of batteries while simultaneously increasing energy density and battery life. Now, part of the reason that this solid state battery cell chemistry seems so good is that it seems immune to the dendritic buildup that has plagued lithium ion batteries since their early days. You charge a lithium ion battery too quickly, you get these little tiny microscopic dendrites build up on the anode, which over time affects the anode's ability to transfer power and essentially increases the internal resistance of the cell. The higher the internal resistance, the more energy is lost during the charging and discharging. The less energy can be transferred out of the cell to use, for example, to push an electric car along, and the battery itself heats up as it's being used, and that can be dangerous. Worse still, if that dendritic buildup continues, it can actually get to a point in smaller form cells where the dendrites actually cause a short circuit within the battery itself, which leads to overheating and ultimately either fire or explosion. A good example of that, of course, being a certain phone made by Samsung, which has been flamingly good at bursting into flames. But enough of Samsung, back to this new type of battery. It seems, because it doesn't have that issue of dendritic buildup, that the battery itself can charge and discharge at far higher C rates than lithium-ion batteries, which again, if you're looking at an electric vehicle battery pack, could pave the way to a future where we are charging electric vehicles from empty to full in minutes rather than hours. And I know it's already possible to add serious range to electric cars thanks to the Tesla supercharger and the new 350 kilowatt plus standard that's being developed for CCS. But we're talking about even faster charging standards. And we're talking about even faster charging standards without any degradation to the battery. You see, even today's modern electric cars, if you charge them using fast charging technology and you don't look after the battery properly, they will suffer some form of battery degradation. 
especially in hot climates. But this new battery technology doesn't seem to suffer from any of those issues. But aside from the three times energy density over today's modern lithium ion battery packs and the low, low cost made possible thanks to the glass construction of the electrolyte and the use of sodium rather than potassium or lithium, comes the news that this solid state battery pack can operate in sub zero temperatures. To date, solid state battery packs have needed to operate in pretty hot conditions. In fact, until recently, in fact, until this battery came along, solid state batteries needed to operate at temperatures in excess of 60 degrees Celsius, or they just didn't work. But this new battery cell chemistry can operate at temperatures down to minus 20 degrees Celsius without the need for any additional heating. And it means that the performance isn't affected by cold weather. And that's great news for electric vehicle manufacturers who currently have to deal with the sad fact that when the weather is cold, electric cars can't travel as far, either because the internal resistance of the cell goes up or because the car is using some of its energy to keep the battery pack warm. But we shouldn't get too excited. This new technology is still only being released in peer-reviewed scientific journals, and it's only just going through the patent application stage. That means it could be a while before we see this new cell chemistry that means it could be a while before we see this new cell chemistry on the market. And as I said at the beginning of the video, there's a big difference between an academic research paper and commercial production. But thanks to Goodenough's continued devotion to science, years after most of his peers will have replaced a desk for a Zimmer frame, we could very soon see a low cost solution to electric vehicle battery packs that could replace lithium ion cell chemistry forever and do away with all of the issues that we've had to deal with thus far with lithium ion cells. And that's super exciting. Thanks for watching today and don't forget to leave your thoughts to what I've said in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And if you liked what you saw today, please consider making a donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign, details for which will be at the end of this video and in the comments below. I'll try and be back tomorrow with more cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation coverage. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Enjoy the rest of your day and keep evolving.